Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X Research and Professional Physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one's entitled, Why Planet X Snow Sometimes Does Not Melt. Now, Planet X water comes to the Earth from space. It comes in as clouds and falls towards the surface of the Earth as rain, hail, or snow. And the clouds remain suspended in the atmosphere until they have gained enough gravitational energy to fall toward the Earth. They gain gravitational energy by absorbing electrons, which are carried by Earth water molecules in the gaseous phase up into the atmosphere. The planet X water falls as rain, which is made of different sized droplets of water. Sometimes rain comes in the form of large droplets of water and sometimes as small droplets of water. This means that the size of the droplet is not affected by the water molecules absorbing electrons until after they reach the surface, which suggests that gravitational attraction to the surface comes before density change or phase change is possible. And here you see um, a diagram which illustrates what occurred to the planet X uh, planets, what caused their formation, and what happened was they started out as living celestial objects, and then their gravitational energy was removed, and they turned into a dead core surrounded by a debris field. And this happened very suddenly, and it could only have been done by the Creator. Only the Creator could have removed photon energy or light energy from the particles making up objects like this. And the fact that it happened so suddenly, um, that can be seen from the fact that these objects are still all coming into the Earth's atmosphere, at least the pieces of debris. And some of these pieces of debris still have buildings on them, and these buildings are still intact and not in ruins. You may look at Article 584 for details on that. And as I said, only God could have removed this energy like this from these planets and caused them to become what they have become. And here you see um, a globular cluster in the Milky Way galaxy, and it is made of separate stars, and the star density increases towards the center, where the gravitational energy is higher. The gravitational energy continuously drops due to continuous matter creation, which then causes uh, the created matter to fission as the gravitational energy drops they tend to fission into smaller and smaller pieces. So that means that the globular cluster turns into millions or billions of stars. In the same way, when, they, uh, when these objects' gravitational energy suddenly dropped, the planets instantaneously broke into smaller pieces, and the surface pieces moving further out from the core than the inner pieces. Thus, at the time when the planets were destroyed, the water split into droplets of water of different sizes. So in the same way, so we went from a continuous a blob of water or a body of water that turned into little droplets of water because of the loss in gravitational energy, just like what occurs with globular clusters. And so, depending on whether we're inside the body of the planet, uh, we would get different sized droplets. So water closer to the core would tend to break into larger drops than water closer to the surface, because it was denser to start off with. And thus, more of its gravitational energy was in a state that was not affected by the removal of its gravitational energy. When photons break up into particles of opposite charge, such as a proton and an electron, the photon energy goes into mass and gravitational energy. The gravitational energy determines the strength of the gravitational interaction. So when a celestial object's gravitational energy is removed, it stops it from being able to interact gravitationally and stops it from being able to create matter. Matter which is unable to create more matter is dead matter, which means that planet X system matter is dead matter. However, the fact that celestial objects do not completely fly apart uh, but remain as one object, 
and these planet X system celestial objects, that there is another basic gravitational interaction at play, which is mass related, and since then the parts of the object break into larger pieces, in other words, water from deep within the planet breaks into larger mm-hmm. droplets of water, the denser parts must have more of this mass energy than the less dense. Since all particles are likely to have the same mass, this would mean that particles have two mass components, a constant particle mass component and another mass component which is associated to density, which I'll refer to as particle mass and density mass. And you can see this. And these diagrams, which illustrate how particles are likely to look like, comes from Article 573. And what we have here is two protons. And these are uh, what normal living uh, matter would interact as and would look like. So we have the proton mass, which is the inner part. This is photon energy as well, but it's the inner part of the photon part of the particle. So the photon is like uh, the sun in a solar system. The charge comes from a particle which has no mass but has charge which orbits the gravitational energy part or the photon part. So there are several parts in this photon part or energy of a particle. It, we start with the mass, the particle mass. It's a proton, so this would it would have enough to make up the mass of a proton, the basic mass of a proton. Then after that, there is another layer, which is the density mass. So this is associated with the density. It's a gravitational interaction that leads to this particular matter having a particular density. So the more there is, the denser this uh, this matter will tend to be. So the, the more strongly it will attract other protons until they are at the appropriate distance to each other to form matter of a certain density. And then after that, on the outside, is the gravitational energy. This is the layer that was removed by the creator. And this is what defines the strength of the gravitational interaction and it what makes particles able to interact without that part and this is what we can see what happened to the planet x matter that part was removed so now they are not able to interact through that interaction with any other matter but they still have the the mass part the proton mass, and they are able to interact with that. This is why they stay together as one object, and they are able to interact through the density part. And they are able to do that because they were created by the same core. So planet X matter or dead matter has only particle mass and density mass. Particle mass never changes. And since density of the matter never changes once it is dead, matter density does not change either, suggesting that it is the gravitational energy that allows a mass density change. So without gravitational energy, there's no way to change the density of the mass. So it cannot change phase, it cannot change its density. So the droplets of water will stay of of the same size. Now, the particles still attract each other and remain attracted to the core, although at a much lower strength than before, suggesting that particles belonging to the same celestial object will always remain connected to each other and the core which created them. So this is a basic interaction because this matter was all created at once by this core, so it belongs to a certain celestial object. But it does not translate into an interaction with Earth matter or solar system matter, which is why the stellar cores are not able to interact gravitationally with the Sun or with the Earth, even though they, they may be inside the atmosphere, at least initially, until they have absorbed some of the Earth or solar gravitational energy. And this means um, this then is living matter. Uh, of low density. So now this part here, this orange part, which refers to density mass, is now lower 
in these particles, two protons. They still have the three interactions, the mass, the density mass, and the gravitational energy. But now there's less density mass. So living matter of low density and high gravitational energy, because you have a lot of the yellow, it's the gravitational energy. And this would be matter that has changed phase from liquid to gas, for example. So it's, it has lower density, it's less able to attract other particles because some of that uh, density mass has been changed into uh, another form, thus allowing matter to change phases from liquid to gas and from gas back to liquid, for example. Since heat is usually applied to liquids, which then allows them to change to solids, this suggests that heat is photon energy, which can affect the density of matter, and that's its density mass, but not its gravitational energy, as it is not able to make matter heavier, only denser. But since heat is felt on energy, which is the same as gravitational energy, this suggests that matter density can only change within a certain gravitational energy level. In other words, once a certain gravitational energy level is reached, then heat results in density or phase changes without affecting the gravitational attraction between particles. Now, heat transfer occurs through electrons transferring their matter density energy to atoms. Electrons do not flow, as in the case of an electric current, across a material, but hop from atom to atom. Thus, metallic particles with more free electrons are able or better conductors of heat. Planet X or dead matter cannot interact through their particle mass or density mass with Earth matter because they have no gravitational energy of their own. Gravitational energy is thus what allows gravitational interaction between particles which are not related by creation. In other words, matter created by a core will always remain connected to that core. But planet X matter can obtain gravitational energy from Earth electrons as they gain gravitational energy. They will eventually reach a level of energy where they are attracted to the Earth's surface and fall toward the surface. They will then continue to gain gravitational energy until they have enough to transfer some of their gained gravitational energy to mass density, which allows them to change phase. And this is illustrated by this diagram. So this is planet X matter after gaining enough gravitational energy from the Earth. So now I've I placed it in a different color. It's not yellow anymore because this is Earth gravitational energy. And so all it had was up to the orange. The orange was um, the, uh, the mass density or the density mass that it obtained when it was created by its core, the planet X system celestial object's core. And it did not lose it when it lost its gravitational energy. It had no gravitational energy, no yellow. But now it's gained some gravitational energy from the Earth, another celestial object. And now it will gain uh, until it reaches a particular energy level where it will become attracted to the surface of the Earth. And gravitational energy is just like photons is quantized. So in order for planet X matter to interact with matter on the surface, there has to be a certain level of photon energy or a certain number of photons in each proton for the interaction to become possible. And once that energy level is reached, then the water molecules will be attracted towards the surface of the Earth and will fall as rain towards the surface of the Earth. Then they will reach the surface of the Earth and they will continue absorbing gravitational energy by absorbing electrons from the Earth. And so eventually they will reach an energy level or enough gravitational energy where some of it gets converted to density mass. And that allows now a phase change to occur. So um, gravitational energy will keep increasing until there is enough to transfer to density mass, which then allows a change of phase from solid to liquid, i.e. from snow to liquid water, for example. Thus, planet X water will fall to the ground in the state that it entered the atmosphere. This could be as liquid water droplets of different sizes as hailstones or as snowflakes. Once the 
water reaches the Earth's surface, it will continue to gain gravitational energy until there is enough to transfer some to matter density. So if the water entered the snow, it can now melt, it can change phase and become liquid water. And if it entered as tiny drops of water, it will be able to coalesce into larger drops of water. And this allows it to reach equilibrium with its environment. In other words, it is not the correct density and phase state that earth water on the surface of the earth and at a specific temperature would have. Thus planet X water would end up at this stage uh, as indistinguishable from earth water. This energy absorption process that planet X water goes through can now also explain why snow often does not melt when heat is applied to it. The snow does not yet have enough gravitational energy to allow it to transfer some of it to density mass, or it doesn't have any density mass that is Earth density mass, so it cannot change phase until it has some of that particular type of photon energy. And with no density mass, there can be no phase change. It just has to remain at the same phase change that it had when it turned into planet X water, when its celestial object died. And this is why snow sometimes does not melt, because it's t it hasn't gained enough gravitational energy to then have enough mass density to be able to be at a certain uh, phase. Now, stellar cores also absorb gravitational energy in a similar matter to water. However, stellar cores ne are never able to gain enough gravitational energy to be as gravitationally attracted to solar system matter as if they had been solar system matter to begin with. Their density or matter content will always be much higher than the strength of the gravitational interaction they will be able to have with solar system matter. They will also never be able to create matter again and will thus remain dead. Solar system objects, in other words, objects like the Moon and Jupiter, which are re-energized planet X system stellar cores, will thus have dead cores. And you may look at articles 5 to 3, that one's on Jupiter and the gas giants, and 5 to 6, which is on the Moon, for more details. In conclusion, planet X water goes through an energy absorption process, which allows it to act in exactly the same way as water, which was formed by the Earth. The process of energy absorption can explain why snow sometimes does not melt when heat is applied to it. Stellar cores can also become solar system objects, but will always seem to have a lot less mass than they actually have. And these are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.